Alright, well, for part four of the turbocharger how to stuff, I figured to get into the tuning side because that's what I do every single day with you guys. So, back pressure. When you start pushing a turbocharger, the thing that the turbo is least efficient on is now removing the heat from the back side of the turbo that's feeding it from your exhaust manifold. And you know, way back in the day, they did clipping of the turbine wheels to open them up. Um, that would actually slow the spin of the turbocharger with that same energy. So if your engine is outputting a mass flow of a certain, let's say, hundred of whatever gram a second, and that goes through a factory turbine wheel, and it spins it at whatever RPM, given that control. By clipping, which is opening up the, technically that would be the exducer, smaller end of the wheel that goes to your downpipe, by opening that up, that same 100 gram per second would now slow the wheel down by comparison. It's not gonna be able to spin it as hard, effectively because now it's able to release that energy down the downpipe with ease. So it takes more energy to get the turbo to the same speed. What does that do? It removes the heat of the system easier. So when you have more turbine blades, it's retaining the heat, making it spool faster, making it more responsive, but you're offsetting the response and the spool for your total power capabilities. So what I'm gonna show you guys now is kind of my thought process on when to upsize things, what actually has to be compensated as a tuning aspect and what works best. So the things we need to think about are if we have a turbocharger that is creating back pressure and so our boost curve is going up and it's leveling out and now it's fading away on the top end. If we have a boost fade condition, this tells me our back pressure is going up. We have to add wastegate duty cycle to the tune to compensate for a flat curve if that's what's requested of the turbocharger. And then we have to figure out the ignition timing and the overall target lambda, which might be compensated to help the back pressure. That might have caught a few of you guys up. <sighs> mm. Tuning secrets. <laughs> you know if you throw more ignition timing at an engine, you drop exhaust temperature and you drop exhaust back pressure. Hmm. Probably shouldn't have put that one online because that's going to save a lot of you. <laughs> so here's the thing um, this is true on, on all aspects but you also have to remember that a sensor is only so good when it comes to understanding um, a true O2 value so your wideband sensor actually has a compensation from Bosch or MTK that will tell you with this pressure ratio from the exhaust, so in a turbocharger system, as you go up and boost, that will have a compensation both lean and rich. As it goes higher up and boost, the rich values will have a compensation. I'm gonna show you guys that right now. And also when you go up in values, your lean will have a compensation. So let me explain that. Oh, that almost ruined the video. Okay, so we go here to my Mtron file, right brain design, semi PP. Lambda EMAP rich correction table. Now, what this means is 100 kPa is atmosphere. If I am at 360 kPa, the lambda sensor is now reading 15.8% 
percentage off of the standard integrated value. Uh, so the further you go into boost, the further these will go from accurate. Here's the lean one, that same 360 kPa of boost, or 260 kPa, our pressure is making the wideband 32% less accurate than what we originally think it's going to be. So it needs to have a percentage difference plotted in for a real wideband reading to be accurate. Okay, why is that important? Holy shit. So, you're telling me all these guys running all this boost, their wideband sensors lied to them? Yeah. The fuck yeah it is. So, what that means is the the difference of, let's say we're hitting 11-0 target, and it's compensating. No, 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 not compensating. 11-0 target, and you have a fluctuation of 0.2 lambda. Okay, that fluctuation's larger than what you think it is. So 32% on the lean side of 0.2, so 132% of 0.2 is now like 0.3. And 15% is like, you know, not that much. It's, it's still 0.23 something, whatever. It's not that much. So that is still going to be shifting the further you go up in boost. So we have to have a lambda target, and you see that can read this properly if you guys really want to start pushing stuff to understand that you know the sensor's accuracy changes with boost. That goes outside of boost as well. So on these EMAP um, lean correction table, it's 17% off at under 60 kPa, so 40 kPa of vacuum. All right, so I've covered a tuning secret that I should have never shared. I've covered a lambda sensor correction on when you go into boost, the lambda sensor actually has a correction that most ECUs don't even calculate, so they're just winging it and they hope your shit doesn't blow up. And they hope that you have experience tuning their particular ECU to where it's not gonna the grenade that shit because you're like, I know my targets, I know what to hit. And the next thing being <laughs> going back to the clipped wheel, going back to the exhaust pressure and how to remove exhaust pressure from a system. You have a few options. One, you can make your downpipe larger. That actually increases the spool uh, characteristics, so it makes the engine respond faster as you're now removing the exhaust pressure easier. Number two, you can make the exhaust manifold larger. This will drop the velocity of the air charge coming into the backside of the turbo at the inducer of the uh, turbo turbine wheel <sighs> Since you're dropping the velocity uh, Essentially the the PC ratio drops um, the third thing being you upsize the turbine wheel and Let's say you have the standard 11 blade whatever it is and Now you go from a 75 millimeter to an 82 millimeter. That's going to drop your overall um, exhaust pressure because now it's able to escape past those if it's all modeled the same it's escape past those now larger regions to go down your downpipe with ease the fourth thing now you're reducing the turbine blades right you're giving it more opening for the same given size so that's going to allow the turbocharger to it's going to be a little bit less responsive, so we kind of think of it as like airplane propeller type stuff. When you have more blades, you have more area of surface to 
have an exhaust gas act upon. And when you have less of those blades, despite their size, there's going to be more air openings around them for exhaust gases to pass through. That's going to drop exhaust pressure. Okay, so it's always a balancing act of response versus the efficiency of the turbine, of how to take the inlet and dump it while also spinning the turbo. <laughs> yeah, that's number one priority. And um, that kind of gives you an idea of that. So it's the main, four main things. You can always clip, which is a very ancient thing if you couldn't get the turbine wheel that you want that's modern you can take an old piece of junk take the top off cut it at an angle cut it exactly flat and it will flow more because now you've opened up the region that should have been a curved catching um, to grab the existing air and you can go too far you can make it so the turbo and the engine is not responsive at all can go way too small to where your exhaust pressure is so high, your drive pressure is so high that the turbo spins up instantly and now you're using the wastegate to bleed it off instantly and the problem is that it's dumping exhaust temperature into the system and that does a lot of things bad. Um, the lifespan of the engine drops, the overall efficiency drops because now you're using extra fuel to try to cool it down to keep it usable. And it's just, it's an endless cycle of mistakes. When you size something properly, it doesn't have this problem. Um, it can run hard at any boost level effectively removing heat you don't have to run a bunch of ignition timing to chase it down you don't have to run crazy huge wastegates to remove this so your wastegate is more accurate and more efficient all of these work in a system together and i hope that this video number four covers the passion that i kind of go through again when i'm designing these kits for you guys it's really kind of sad because a lot of this stuff will not be gone over with you and your tuner or your advisors or the shop that you send your cars to because they don't actually know it so yeah I'm gonna leave it at that hopefully you guys enjoyed this one I have a lot more coming so cheers and uh, exhaust back pressure it's a big subject it can go on for much longer than this. <laughs> Alright, see you guys in the next one.